This is my sister Janae Uzalak. This is my sister Afton Baxter. Yeah. And we've done this for a lot of years. So how many of you have followed us? How many well, were here in 2006? 2009. 2009. 2009. Okay. Update. Update. 2009. Two of you. Okay. Great. So how many of you have been participating in your wonderful stakes classes and learned how to do so many great things? Yeah, love it. Love. Um, you're here tonight to get information and then to go home and put that information together. Okay, we're going to help you gather that information and figure out how to use it, make it work for you. We have three goals tonight. One is to provide peace of mind for you. Okay, we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. First, we want you to feel like, oh, I can do this. This is going to be good. I will feel good about this. The second one is going to be we're going to motivate you. You're going to be really excited you came tonight. And then the third one is that we will give you information because information empowers you. It gives you knowledge, but if you don't do anything with the knowledge, nothing happens. And we got our goal set up for us. Here we go. All right. So, um, okay, here's <coughs> two sentences to remember. This food storage is not just for emergencies. Okay? And the second one is... I will never feel powerless again. That's what I want you to feel like. Okay? You're going to be in control of what's going on. Okay, so we have a little audience participation here. We are going to teach you this wonderful song. You're only going to have to learn the chorus, but we're going to sing verses to you as the night goes on. So you get to join in on the chorus. So, maybe. All right, here is the chorus for you. It's to the tune of Yankee Doodle. So we all know that. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna, Janae and I are going to sing just the first verse, and then you can help us with the chorus. Our prophet told us to prepare for famine and disaster. If we obey our family, live happily ever after. Be prepared, our prophet says, store your wheat and honey. Plant a garden, learn first aid, and don't forget your money. Get fine. All right. All right. Um, now we know that you've been getting food, buying it in case lots, which is really good. Um, we hope that you just, we're going to help you put all these case lots of food together into a meal form. Um, first of all, we have 20 big problems that people do with food storage. It's called the 20 most common mistakes. First mistake is food storage mentality. Food storage, food storage. Okay, you erase food storage from your brain. It's called personal grocery store. Okay, that's what I call it in my house. I don't store food. I buy it and rotate it and use it because it's my personal grocery store. It's my base, my grocery store, whatever you want to call it. We're going to eliminate really problem number one right there. We don't call it food storage, okay? Yes. My husband calls us the Little Smiths. The Little Smiths downstairs, so he shows the home teachers, he shows everybody, and they go, great, we know where to come when it's a, a trouble around here. Little Smiths. Okay, number two. Number two is rotation. <coughs> we want you to make sure you're going to rotate what you buy. Because one of the worst things you can do is buy all this food <coughs> and store it in your basement because it will stay there for 20 years because that's what they tell you, right? Who wants to eat food for years from now anyway? It's been stored for 10 years. So we're going to um, get you excited about rotating and show you how to do that. And uh, even our prophets have said, buy and store what you eat, right? And then after that, go for the wheat and honey. But first, buy and store what your family eats. And then we know that you can keep rotating because you like spaghetti, yeah? Yes? But what if you, you eat a lot of fresh stuff? And so the canned stuff stays down in the basement. Right. So you can just supplement. You're gonna, yeah. keep, you'll have to open a can of beans once in a while. <laughs> you know. You're going to have to keep your body used to that, too, even though it's not as preferable, I know. But you'll have to do that because then when you have to eat it, you'll go, oh, this is so disgusting. I only eat fresh foods. That's what my daughters are telling me. We don't want to store such and such because we only eat fresh now. Well, there will be a time when it won't be gardening season, or you won't be able to run to the store and buy all that wonderful fresh spinach and 
and asparagus that you think you need to have all the time. It comes in cans too and it's good. So we have to kind of keep our bodies acclimated to the canned stuff. Yes? You know, I also think you can store seeds and if the weather, you know, if it's right, you can, Absolutely. why can't you use that? You really, you mean <laughs> seeds as in sprouting seeds or seeds as in gardening? Gardening seeds. Absolutely. Make sure they're not hybrid. Make sure they're seeds from vegetables that you have grown that you can regenerate the next year. Okay. Cool. Any other question? All right. Okay. The third one is production. Uh, get used to, um, yeah, got your seeds. Have you started your garden? Who has started their garden out there? Yay. Wonderful. Keep it going. Uh, you will find, challenge yourself to do something new every year. Last year I put in um, spinach, put it in in the spring, and the little thing on the back says, but you can plant it in the fall too. So I went ahead and planted it the 15th of August, and I have had spinach all winter long. I took a big Tupperware you know, container and just put it over my spinach. I walked it, lifted it, put it in. I mean, I'm talking January, February, snow everywhere else. So, you know, do something new and be excited about that. So there's some fresh food that you can keep. Of course, I have my carrots on the ground. I can pull those up. But, um, yeah, try something new. And every year, give yourself a goal to plant one thing that you love in a little bit more quantity so that you could perhaps can it. So if it, tomato is your big thing that you really eat a lot of tomato products, try buying a few more plants and then harvesting them and putting up a few bottles. You don't have to put up 60 at once. You can just do one counter full. So that would just be one thing to, to um, increase your skill and keep it up and enjoy your products. So let's your talk about one can cans. Let's do that. Can I ask you a question? If you put the plants under, I mean, they have to get sun. So what kind of thing did you put in there? It's one of those big giant Tupperwares that you buy at um, Rubbermaid, whatever. Yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. Storage, oh, so box. storage box. That's storage box. But it's clear so the sun can get through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. And snow was all over it. I fresh. I don't know. <laughs> Had my fresh spinach. Okay. Um, she's going to talk about why we home can. How many of you are actually home can or canning? Most of you are. Wonderful. Just let's review why to do it and why to pass this skill on to your children. Okay, what's one good reason? Pass it on to your kids. One good reason. Pass it on. Tastes better. Keep it the skill going. Tastes better. Tastes better. Mm -hmm. What else? You don't waste. Ooh, right. Very little waste. What else? Grocery stores might not always be there. Ah, She's might not always be available. She's and you know what's in it. You know what's in it. And you know what's not in it. Yeah. Good. Very good. You know how old it is. Oh, yeah, you know, it's fresh. It's going to well, be you know, fresh. You know the age of it. Yeah, it's going to be great. <coughs> Shelf stable food. All right. Well, and preserving homegrown fruits and vegetables. You know what? Satisfaction. I think it's awesome. It's great. And teach our children um, self reliance. Okay. I think you've named it all. And oh, we didn't. We didn't name the cost factor. There you go. That's funny. That's usually used to be the first reason. But we're doing it for better reasons. Yes. Cost factor. Very good. Um, canning actually was started in 1795. Isn't that great? Napoleon offered 12,000 francs to anyone who could devise a way to preserve food for his army and navy. Wow. So down through the ages we've had. Um, 1875, Libby developed a can for canning corned beef, the tapered cans. Interesting. Canned ham or and spam. I happen to love spam. Came out in 1926. So, anyway, we're thankful that canning is around, and there's nothing, as you will find as the night goes on, and a, hand, a website that you will see. There's practically nothing that you can't can or preserve to put in your basement or your <coughs> little smiths. All right. Okay, the next one is inventory evaluation. Um, so, in order for the things under these cloths to make sense, we need you to fill out that paper right there that's numbered at 1 to 18. Because what we're going to have you do in a minute is the basis of everything else we're going to teach you tonight. So get your pens ready. And I want you to shout out. And we're going to have a prize for the person that gets all 18. And we're only going to do this for like a minute and a half. But um, I'm going to give you a minute right now to write down the dinners that you like to eat. Dinners you like to fix for your family, your kids, your grandkids, yourself, your husband, 
dinners. Okay, on your mark, your set, go. And maybe, maybe think outside the fresh box. Maybe think more inside of what, what do I have in my basement I can throw together, or what could I put in my basement to throw together? Or what do I like to eat? Rather than, yeah. So okay, comfort foods you can like. We have a nice prize, so. <laughs> Fried yep. chicken and mashed potatoes. Okay, I want you to write down yeah, stuff, sure. and then we're going to share. But whoever has the most gets the prize in about another 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> more than 14 dinners listed. Anybody else? Oh, okay, who has more than 15? 16? 18? You have 17? What do you have? Oh, 20. Okay, when, when the evening's over, you get to pick one of those bags over there. Okay, so to help the rest of us out, start Let's shouting out. I did no, I did no. <laughs> Start shouting out to help the rest of us. I want everybody to go home with 18 ideas. So what, else, what do you have on your list? You said chicken and mashed potatoes. Cool. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. What else? Pizza, yum. Roast. I have like oh. roast and pork and spaghetti and chicken and oh, yeah. tacos. Oh, chilies. Uh, spaghetti, chili. Do write these down. I heard you say something when we started this. What did you say? It's an Italian meal. I heard you say it. Lasagna. 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 I heard that. Spaghetti. Lasagna. Salad. Tacos. 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 Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Sure. Beef and noodles. Beef and noodles. noodles. Enchiladas, people. Enchiladas. Oh, that's so good. Chicken salad sandwich. Okay, I put fish. Yeah. Can you do fish? Uh, we sure. can do fish. Sure. We can Lots do of fish. fish dishes. We can't do shrimp, but we can do fish and all. Okay. Homemade soups. Homemade soups. Sure. Can't have a whole chicken. We can sometimes fry those for dinner, but not yeah. for often. Breakfast for dinner. Okay, now, does everybody have? One of my favorites. Yeah, Shepherd's pie. That's my husband's favorite. Yeah. Hay and haystacks. Hay and haystacks. Okay, do you guys almost have your 18 now? Do you want a toss? That's the Mexican version of Hawaiian haystacks. That's wonderful. What's it called? Oh, do you want a toss? Uh -huh. want oh, it's good. You put your sauce on the Fritos and then do all of the salad and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's kind of like a walking taco. Yeah, walking tacos. Tortillas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else have one we didn't name? Well, we could say slight steak. Slight steak and potato meal. Roast beef? Yeah, roast beef. Yeah, roast, beef. Yeah, roast, yeah, roast and potatoes and gravy. Okay, yeah, so. Quiche. Ooh, quiche. Good one. You can do that one. Can you do sloppy joes? Yep. yep. Oh, do sloppy uh, joes. Salads. Salads are a little tricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Delicious yeah. sprouts. Figure, yeah. You can have a sprout salad. Okay. And you have your spinach under a Tupperware thing and go out in the garden. Okay, so in Great. your inventory of your food storage, you want to make sure that you account for three meals a day. So you just did 18 dinners. You would need about 14 um, breakfasts, 14 lunch ideas, and 14 snack ideas. We're not going to do that right now. But if, if we run out of food or you're in a disaster, two meals a day are not, it's not going to be enough food. Because a disaster brings on anxiety. It brings on stress. You're probably shoveling and working and um, helping with getting mud out of the way or, you know, you might be physically or your husband or whatever needing to do projects. You're going to burn more calories. So make sure you're planning for enough food. Don't rely on just two meals a day. And make sure
make sure that you're thinking, do I have little kids? Or do I have teenagers? If the box says this will be four, it probably will be one 18-year-old teenager. So, but it could be two or three little kids. So put that into your uh, thinking. Okay, the next um, item out of the 20 is experience. Start playing with what you buy. Okay, I am not a proponent of going and buying food that you can store for 20 years and you never use it. What experience is that giving you and how are you going to know what it's going to taste like? Okay, so experience, play around with uh, what you can fix. And teach others. It builds confidence how to do it. Yeah, builds confidence. Don't leave yourself as the only one that knows how to fix the lasagna or the roast the potatoes. Yeah, Involve yes. others in your household. Everybody's okay. got the same equipment. Well, let's talk skills. about how did you talk about how to do the meals now? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So, reveal um, the meals. One of the keys you've already learned in this state is pressure canning. It's such a key to being able to have protein and good stuff. Protein, vegetables. Um, so, hope, how many of you are doing that? Pressure canning, protein. Pressure canning hamburger, chicken, pork, fish. London broil. How many are doing that? Tell me what you have done. I have chicken and beef and that's all I use. <laughs> and that's that's fine. Wonderful. That's fine. Somebody over here. Chicken and pork. Ooh, yay. Ooh. I Did love you the pork. Whole pork? And Put yeah. barbecue sauce on that. Oh, yeah. So tender when you pressure can. Your own food. We've already talked about you know what preservatives, which you don't have any preservatives in your own food. Um, you're not getting a lot of the stuff that they're putting in at canneries at big factories. And I read just the other day that our meat prices are at a 27 year high. And we won't have any relief for at least two years, if then. So, brothers and sisters, when meats go on sale, which we were lucky last month. All of the meats went on sale, and some of us that are empty nesters, I still went and bought 100 pounds of meat. I put up chicken and hamburger and pork because yes, because I use the pork a lot. I use the chicken a lot, and the hamburger that I turn into taco burger, whatever. I want to be so prepared to feed my neighbors when I have to, you know, because we're going to have to. You know that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> You're out of my neighborhood. What's the Sorry. shelf life? So as 15 to 20. Prices. What is a good price? The chicken was $1.49, boneless, skinless breast. The 93% hamburger, not such a good price, but better than normal. It was $2.49. And the country style ribs were $1.69. Yes, yes. You can buy at the Zycon Foods. You can order online and you can get great prices on the Z-A-Y-C-O-N. It's also hormone-free, range-free, grain-fed, never fabulous frozen. meat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zaycon. Well, I say it's Zaycon. Z-A-Y-C-O-N. And it's ordering meat online. They bring the meats to a parking lot. You can go and show up, and they've got just exactly what you ordered. And it's got your name on it, and they put it in your car for you. Is it like, Zaycon Foods? Uh-huh. Zyconfoods.com. And like the chicken's $1.88 a pound for Bonus free skinless. range, hormone free, yeah. never frozen from the farm. Isn't that great? Is it expensive? Dollar eighty eight. She was saying for, for chicken, the, the hormone free, free range chicken. Mm -hmm. I would pay that price anytime. Which is what it is at Sam's Club regularly for the knot. For the knot. For the knot free stuff. <laughs> yeah. So you could buy. Captured. Yeah. So here's another. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. When you say you're empty nesters, what size of bottle? in pints, except for the London broil, I do it in quarts, because that, that's a Sunday meal. And so we kind of eat most of that. With she eats more than I do. So you just pressure cook that? Mm -hmm. But the chicken, even a pint, this is a half pint, even a pint will make a casserole that we'll eat for two or three days. Uh -huh. And gives me chicken salad that I can stuff in tomatoes. And chicken, or chicken well, alfredo. I mean, it, it goes a long way, a just a pint. A pint of, of meat is one pound. Of, of no other, no bone, no nothing. And so it will feed six adults. 
So if it's $1.88 a pound, you just spend $1.88 for two or three or four meals. And um, see, if, if yeah, you're getting right. ahead of yourself and you're doing several years at once, like she went and bought 100 pounds, she's not going to eat all 100 pounds in one year. So for me, I'm still finishing up my 2008 meat mm -hmm. that I bought. It's wonderful, but just think what I paid in 2008 for that meat. Oh, that was like teams. Yeah, it was, a, oh, it was a dollar nineteen for the how, for the how chicken. Long, how long can meat last? Let's well, see, that's not a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can rotate. But so we'll but, answer it. But <laughs> it's in a bottle of glass. It's not around metal, which I love because the metal, so you know how it's breaking down. Yeah, breaking down. Yeah, yeah. down. So they, that's a good question. Should we talk about expiration dates? Yes. Well, at least yeah. in your bottle of meats, uh, fifteen to twenty years. Oh. Easy, but yeah. you won't be so doing it on the bottom shelf. Well, yeah, I'm eating 2009. 15 to 20 years, really? Because yeah. I've heard one year, so mine, oh, mine is two years old, and I was worried. That's how long it lasts in the freezer. I mean, you have yeah, pressure. Yeah, that's your freezer needs. Yeah, well, yeah. so, yeah, like I'm saying, I'm too Yeah, it lasts a lot longer than canned foods, and they'll last for, well, it's all about the expiration date. Did you bring They, um... They've done some studies. They found on this steamboat um, that the food was 100 years old. And so they took it into the labs and bottled, bottled um, food, vegetables. Oh, so it was bottled. I'm sorry? So it was canned or bottled? It was bottled. Okay. Bottled. Yeah. Um, and after it was 100, it was 99 years old, in the lab, they took it all apart. And their review on it was, when they opened it up, it looked like corn or whatever it was. It held up its value in taste a little bit, you know, after 99 years, it was off a little bit. But it still was nutritionally found food. So, now you know what your fruit looks like after a couple years. Yeah, now I don't care. It, it was darkened, but it still had the nutrients, vitamins, so, minerals. Your meats so, and vegetables. Yes. Why did you say place the meat on the bottom shelf? Oh, she asked why place the meat on the bottom shelf. Who can answer that? Yes. Earthquakes. Earthquakes? What would happen? Yeah, I'm not talking about the my, jars. My, we're yeah. just talking about the meats. In fact, uh, we put all of our meats back in the box that it came in and, and pull the, the cellophane back over it. We only cut it on three sides and, and pull it back on. Came in? Yeah. Uh, the canning box that the yeah. bottles came in. Absolutely, and put them all on the bottom. And then they're <coughs> very safe. I was going to say, too, another way to get meat cheap is to buy it on the hoof. And our farmers in the area that sell <coughs> beef that is not hormone fed and it's grain fed and everything you can buy. Right. The hoof. Look, for, look for your farmers, yeah, your sources of meat. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, let's talk about the expiration dates. Anybody Guys. know? Have you, have you throw it away? My neighbor threw away all of her, her fruit storage because it was two or three years old. Oh, I said, Donna, no. And she was also cute. She's Japanese, and she threw out all her wheat. And she said, I, I feel so bad, I don't eat wheat. I said, well, don't buy it then. I mean, she felt like she had to buy it because she <laughs> were told to buy, you know, oats, wheat, whatever. I said, you buy what you're going to eat, what your culture or what you like. Don't feel guilty about buying something that you're not going to grind or not going to use, okay? But I said, Donna, no, 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 the expiration dates are only there for the companies and the lawyers and, and all these strings that we go through. So um, really, if, if the can is not bulging, if it doesn't smell, you are fine. And we just told you about food that's been found in Mormon um, basements that's over 60, 70 years old, that BYU has done some tests on. It's a wonderful report that we've read on. The food is okay. The nutrition has started to deteriorate, but it, it's, it's okay. So if you know that it smells funny and it doesn't look so good, by all means, do not eat it. And especially your meats. If your <coughs> bottle of meat has become unsealed, you know, it doesn't stay down, don't you even think you can cook that really good. No, no, no. You throw away meat that has become unsealed. And it will smell. Oh. oh well, fruits won't smell so bad. They might have a little mold, but no, your botulism, uh, your meats, 
Oh, they'll stink the high heaven when you open and it up in, if in, it hasn't sealed. In eight years of pressure canning me, I've had two bottles that became unsealed. So it's, it's not a common thing. Just your precautions. Yes. So you're saying just the bottle. You're not talking about cans, right? Right. Let's talk about that for a minute. We'll oh, get back to The cans, you can say it's good until they bulge. The expiration dates mean nothing unless you're an attorney hired by a company to protect them. That's all they did it for was so that the lawyers could have protection. But actually the stores say they really, really don't mean anything, but the stores have to get rid of them. Okay, yeah. so bulging and smell. Wet. And leaking, if the cans leak or bulge or there's an odor. So I have to tell you about this cute lady. She said she bought the sugar from the store, she comes home, she says, I had to laugh as I saw stamped on the top of the bag, just used by 11, you know, November 2015. I had to ask myself, what company, what, co what the company thought was going to happen in the next two years that would make the bag of sugar either less usable or bad to eat? I mean, sugar keeps it down, like honey and salt. But, but there's things that will affect your, the way you package things, but um, sugar, oh, I, I want, don't want to give that away. Anyway, recent studies have revealed that 40% of the food in the U.S. gets thrown away prematurely. So the average homeowner is throwing away $500 worth of food at least every year. They shouldn't. They don't need to. Okay. So they're like, time for another sign. Oh, yeah, yeah. When Father Noah built an ark, the people laughed and shouted, but when the rain began to pour, those people never doubt. They wish they, they hadn't wish they doubted. Had doubted. She changed the word. They, <laughs> they wish they hadn't doubted. Be prepared, our prophet said. Store your wheat and honey. Plant a garden, learn first aid, then don't forget some money. <laughs> okay. So, we got that okay on expiration. Somebody had a question? Yes. I have some evaporated milk that's probably 15 years old in a can. You're saying that's okay? Open it and smell it. Now, evaporate the, the powdered milk. My no, son. No, just, you know that. Oh, canned milk. Canned milk. Oh, canned milk. Okay. Sure. Open it up. Sure. No Open it up. But I will say, storage has a lot to do with your food. My son in Oregon, they have six kids, and they just totally do powdered milk. That's very inexpensive for them. It's like 40 cents a gallon, and they go through a lot of milk. And so, country cream, country fresh. Those are the two best brands to buy, oh, by the way. Definitely, definitely. So, I, 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 I took up all this powdered milk, gave it to him, and a year later, my daughter in law called me and she said, Mom, I hope I don't think she had a powdered milk and it's all orange on the top. I said, Well, where did you store it? In the garage. Oh. <laughs> you know, there are certain things that affect food. Okay, we're going to give a prize to the person. There are five things that affect food. The person that can come up with three of those five things that destroy food. Whoa. Okay, wait, i got to have a person. Air moisture temperature. Okay, she got three of them right up, so get a prize at the end. Air, moisture, temperature, I need two more. Chemicals. Light. 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 And... What you say? Oh, wow. <laughs> now, back, back to the sugar story. There's three things that affect sugar. One is the heat. That will make it, you know, just deteriorate it. it. Um, there's also these little black bugs. So you want to make sure that there's no sugar spilled anywhere in the storage room. Because those little black bugs will invade the sugar and go after the Plus sugar. Plus ants. Sure, and ants will come so in too. But a moisture. And then the moisture. Yeah. So. Okay, so uh, one thing you have got to have in your personal grocery store are mouse traps. Mm. I am so serious on that. Any kind of a disaster we have, mouse traps. Woo! Those little rodents are going to come out from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about how to store cheese. So you'll already have what you need to catch mice. You'll have mouse traps right in your boots, in your grocery store, in your garage, or have them everywhere. You can store a cat. But I'm telling you, they are out there. The mice are out there. I was sitting on my porch three years ago, and I saw this little mouse dancing across my backyard. And we have a park right behind us. And so he was skipping across. Steve, get the get a mouse trap. 
and it was by my shed. So he put a mouse trap there. We st I started thinking, well, if there's one, I'd heard the story, if there's one mouse, there are 23 more mice. Because they propagate. Yeah, um, they can do that about every eight days. And so it's amazing how fast. So you want to get them. And the best time to get them is in the fall. So anyway, I put this mouse trap out there. We put six mice traps, mouse traps, all around my shed and at my back door. So I didn't want to wait till they got in the house. So we had them, you know, all that way. And I would, and I have a really nice neighborhood, guys. Really nice. What did you say, Kathy? Nice it's neighborhood. Really nice. I caught twenty-six <laughs> oh, uh, mice nice. in a six-week period. What traps? Good on traps. Any kind? Oh, that's a good question. What kind of traps? I tried some. Some. I'm sorry, but it's the kind that go. <laughs> oh, the old old fat. Fat. Yellow old fat. Old yeah. yeah. Don't use decon, because all that does. They eat that decon and then they go look, it dehydrates them and they go looking for water and they go right in your house and your wallboard. Because there's moisture, moisture in wallboard. So, didn't mean to get on that, but you know. Okay. Know that mice, they're going to wreck your food. So um, be careful. Okay. Okay. Um, we did the exposure date. Now, the reason you have a list of 18 meals for dinner is because now for homework, we want you to go home. And we want you to, to write down how many of them are chicken, like put a CH, like all the ones that have chicken in them, like your chicken enchilada and your Hawaiian haystacks, all that kind of stuff. Put a B for beef, you know, put a P for pork, so that you know you've got pretty well-rounded set of meals. So we don't want, you know, out of 18, 17 of them to be chicken. Mm -hmm. That causes another problem. So, or whatever. Um, the seafood, same time. don't forget your seafood. Yes, you can, you can put up fish. My neighbor goes um, fishing, and he, he doesn't even like fish. So he drops yeah. six fish off at my front door. They were trout. Mm -hmm. And when I put a pressure can of the trout with some barbecue sauce in the bottle, mm -hmm. it tastes just like salmon. It's good stuff. Fish is very good, very high in nutrition. Mm -hmm. Kathy? Don't forget about the bacon, because bacon sells bacon, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's oh, like bacon. Bacon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, bacon. Now, you can, you can Google how to do bacon, and when, when I read through this guy's explanation of it, I didn't like that he used wax paper. You roll the bacon, you know, pieces, and then you roll it, and you roll it. I thought, I want wax paper in my, my bottle. That sounds like it would well, melt. I mean, you get it pretty high for pretty long. And so I used parchment paper. Wonderful. Just cut that part of it. Anyway, talk to us later if you want to do bacon. But oh yeah, I got bacon because I love bacon. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you kind of get how you want to figure out your meals, and then you're going to watch for the case lot sales because you're going to know with your chicken meals how many of that uh, of those casseroles need cream chicken. Cans of that. How many need this? How many need tomato soup or tomato paste? So then you'll start figuring out. I don't have a, I don't have enough tomato paste for the the kind of food I like to eat. So that's going to give you a little wake-up call as to what to start buying on your case lot sales. Okay. So, so we need to talk about buying in bulk. Um, now we've talked a little bit about that. Buy in bulk whenever you can. And as a state, you're doing that a lot. Um, this one on sale for 88 cents last year. When I thought, okay, it's spaghetti sauce. Yeah. So I went home and I looked up on the computer, I Googled Prego, 320 recipes of how to use spaghetti <coughs> sauce. I, really, 320 ways to use spaghetti sauce? I just did spaghetti. So my husband and I have never eaten so good. We've had chicken cacciatore. We've had some really fun meals because I have a lot of this. And I will tell you, I just read a report from a big manufacturing company in California. They put up tomatoes. Any kind of tomato sauce, just tomato chunks, whatever. And because of the drought, we have a lot of places that have drought you know, around the world. They are only doing half production. Mm -hmm. That's a big blow to a big company. So you get to see this go up in price. Anything that's tomato based. So watch for the sales, or just buy it and it up. Or grow your tomatoes and take them over to somebody's house that knows how to can them. And now, do it together. she and I will split cases. You know, if I don't want to buy a whole 
I call her up or call your neighbor up, call your sister, your, your kids. Hey, I'm going to buy this. Anybody want to split it with me? Or, you know, so that, yes. Number 10 cans. You've heard that they last 20 years. If you don't open them. But I want you to open them. Remember? Because I want you to try them. Uh, so what, we, what I'm going to suggest to you is that when you open up your number 10 can of whatever it is, that you take small, I say all these peanut butter bottles, they're a great size, and I will fill it with whatever I have just opened. And I will take it upstairs and put it in my little pantry. And then and put a scooper in it. So I start using the stuff. I can throw it in soups, stews, um, salads. You know, you've got to get used to using the things that you're storing. Okay, we don't want you to store. We'll also teach you some ideas on how to store what you've opened that's not in here so that you can preserve this back for another 20 years. But now you have a way to open this Put it in something smaller, take it upstairs, and start using it, okay, in your recipes. Um, I would tell you one of the greatest products is um, freeze-dried green peppers and red peppers. Whoa, what an invention. Do you, um, you don't, you don't, that you don't can or freeze yours, or do you have, or, uh, freeze-dried is not done by the house. I was just wondering, I'm sorry, do you dehydrate yours? No, I, I'm talking about freeze dryer. You can dehydrate, but it's a little tricky when you have to work with vegetables to make sure no bacteria is growing. Okay, so that brings me to another comment. Dehydration of food is a wonderful way to go. How many of you have play with that? Dehydrate? You're, you're at about 74% nutritional value on the food that you dehydrate. On your canned goods that you buy from the store, you're at about 65% and it decreases about 4% every year. I mean, it gets to where it just kind of stops at about 50%, like the food that they found after 90 years. It just, you know, just stabilizes or stops. But so obviously dehydrating is a good way to go. Um, I don't know what it is on pressure canning, but you, you don't, you didn't put preservatives in it. So I'm sure that protein and everything in there is, mm -hmm. is still very high. And then freeze dry, which if we have time, we will talk about is 92% um, retention, of, retention of nutrients. So freeze dry is wonderful. Yes. Yes. Okay, so get excited to start using your products in smaller quantities and having them right there. So don't run down to your grocery store and feel guilty about opening up a number 10 can to try it. You already have a whole bunch of those little bottles with food in it that you can start. Just while you're on that topic, what about freezing vegetables and stuff like that? That that preserves more nutrients, doesn't it, than yes. canning by far? But oh, we haven't. She's the nutritionist, but we haven't really studied that because our class is all based on not using your fridge and freezing oh. for food preparation. So yeah, you, if you've got a good freezer, fine. My my daughter-in-law up in Oregon, she's got a freezer that's as big as this table. You know, the big, huge kind that takes up half your garage, and they fill it with beef that they split with neighbors and all kinds of stuff. And she called me after she heard I pressure canned food. She goes, I get it. If my electricity goes out, I'm going to lose everything in this freezer. Mm -hmm. So I flew up there and helped her um, pressure can a lot of her meat. My gosh, it saves her so much time now for dinners. It's already cooked. She just tells her shit. Yes, I think so. Yes. I'll ask a stupid question. No such thing. Freeze dry. Does everyone understand what that is? What? constitutes freeze drying. I hear that. Okay. You freeze it and then you dry it or where's where it all come from? <laughs> good question. Here you go. And you will get this handout on your website. Um, so freeze dried food has advantages over frozen food and dehydrated food because frozen food retains the flavor and the nutritional value 
Um, but, and then dehydrated food and canned food are shelf stable, but lose flavor and texture and some nutritional value. But freeze drying is the best of both of those worlds because it preserves the freshness, color, taste, aroma, while being completely shelf stable. So here's what they do with freeze drying. They take fresh food, so imagine raspberries, pineapple, peas, whatever, and we'll have some samples for you out here. They take it and they flash freeze it, then they place it in this big vacuum chamber and they suck out 99% of the moisture. So when you taste it, it's gonna taste so amazingly strong. Because, well, you'll see how strong the flavor is because the moisture's been taken out. Yeah, we can pass those around. That's a good idea. I've got peas. Take, taste the peas first and then the raspberries. But my very favorite one is corn. Oh, it's just like eating popcorn that doesn't get stuck in your teeth. It's so crisp and sweet. Sweet. You'll notice that the flavor is so much more flavorful. Right? So, okay, so, and then they, um, they take the moisture out, they evaporate it with ice, and it's as low as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But here's what I like about freeze dry. Minus 50. Minus 50. The produce has to be clean. It has to be with no bruises, or it won't vaporize properly. So you're getting the best of a crop of food to be freeze dried because they can tell if if it's bruised or you know not not good. It won't work right. If it and if it has pesticides, herbicides, anything like that, it won't work at the freeze dried level either. So you won't get stems, you won't get bruising, you won't get spoilage in freeze dried food. reconstitute it if you want, to put it in casseroles and stuff, uh, to make raspberry syrup, to make um, a raspberry cheesecake or something, you just yeah. reconstitute it. So, anyway, okay, we are going to move on, but have you passed out the raspberries? Mm. Now, the raspberries are really strong, and they're they're tart, but if you like raspberry tartness, and the strawberries, just imagine those. So come down the ground. Blueberries, blackberries, pineapple. They even have freeze-dried ice cream. Okay, we oh the yogurt. freeze dried yogurt is delicious. Yeah. It's a little, little cubes. Oh, it's just like it, and it just oh. it just melts in your mouth. It's like what um, you're do Napoleon you ice cream. Yeah, yeah just like Napoleon. Like having a little fudge sickle, a little chocolate, like having a fudge sickle just melt on your tooth. I got my freeze dried ice cream at the Emergency Essentials. Well, how about all your freeze dried things? Do you go for a certain brand? You can you can buy it at Walmart. Walmart um, went to Augustin, Augustin Farm and said, we want to buy your product, but we want our label on it. So it's Augustin Farm is the big one to buy free Now it's owned by Blue Chip. So fantastic. They always have conference specials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say 40% on everything in the store. And Honeyville. Honeyville is a big company that has all kinds of free strides. They have over, I don't know, 80 products that are free strides. And they'll let you sample. You go into Honeyville and say, I want to taste. They have a room in the back. Everything's, all the cans have been opened, and you can open, you can taste. So it's Honeyville. How about pesticides? They cannot have pesticides on the free, the free strike. Food. So they're organic then? Not entirely. And organic is a, we don't want to get over it. It's a misnomer. They, yeah. Do some research on pesticides and organic. What really involves fertilizers, but they can't use chemical pesticides. 
Okay, we need to go on. We're only on number six. Oh, um, food storage containers and conditions. We've already talked about how food deteriorates. So that's that category of watching how your food deteriorates. Make sure you're storing less than 70 degrees, so don't store food out in your garage. I don't care if it gets cold in the winter. It's too hot in Utah in the summertime. Put your paper towels and your products like that in your garage to make space. Um, at the Okay, um, she's saying we've got to go? We've got to go. Um, yeah, we talked about our fun stuff. I know, we haven't got to that. Okay. Food nutrition, we've talked about that. How you now know about food nutrition and the vitamins and the, that kind of thing. Vitamin C, how are you going to get vitamin C in your food storage? Freeze dried and sprouts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Freeze-dried vet fruits and vegetables and brewing sprouts. Okay, the, ne the next problem is you don't have enough water Sprouting to store. Alfalfa. 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 you got to store Alfalfa. water, guys. you got to store water, especially for the freeze-dried food, for dehydrated food. Appetite fatigue, what is that? I'm going to give you a prize for whoever. Tell me what appetite is. Yes, Carolyn? You get tired of eating the same thing. Yes, that queso. So you don't want everything in your food storage freeze-dried. You don't want all those MRE meals. You, you, want, you want some canned goods that have the liquid that you can actually drink the juice in the mandarin oranges. Okay, you know. The tenth one, Different maybe varieties. we won't get the rest of them. The tenth one is comfort food. So let's do comfort food. Oh, okay. okay. Underneath this the towel is, what would be your favorite comfort food, sisters? Chocolate. Hey! Here's chocolate. There's our comfort yeah. food. <laughs> okay. So my husband's idea of comfort food would be shepherd's pie and spaghetti. So, of course, I had to start with my spaghetti for him. But, um, oh, she's got her hamburger rocks. These are all, these are all your normal foods that you can make. Um, but they go Chinese stale. tuna casserole. And they go stale. You got I'm, fun pretzels. I'm an empty nester. I can't eat that whole bag. Right. So I put it in there, and I, the last time we had... The recipe for that, I only ate half the bottle, so I resealed it. So and here's our cashews. Boy, do nuts go rancid fast. Do you crush your cans? Also? No, you don't crush your can. We are talking sealed. So they won't go rancid. Vacuum sealed. How many of you have a vacuum sealer? Absolutely. Get that puppy out and use it for everything. Coconut. I have to have coconut in my food storage because my Hawaiian haystacks and my so my cookies, this is vacuum sealed and it won't go rancid. Okay, we're going to move over to the child. We have a question. Come up here afterwards. How yeah. do you use oxygen absorbers in your your bottles when you do that? No, no, okay. no. But you take all the air out. How do you so you don't need to do write that out. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay, come over to the chocolate. You guys are going to love this one. Um, this is our chocolate. I, I have a whole shelf of just chocolate. We do. And this That's is where we actually started our food storage. None of it's going to be too late. Sure I'll eat it before, well, you know. it when you buy in bulk. Yeah, it yeah. goes white. Okay, here's our, my Butterfingers, my husband's Snickers. It's sealed. These are good for at least a year. Oh, How did you seal it? More than that. Let me tell you this story. Um, you buy in bulk, you buy after holidays, yep. on sale. So, but this was Halloween, and I bought a five pound bag of this to hand out to all my little cute neighbor's kids. Well, that year they had trunk or treat. I'm left with four and a half pounds of this stuff, and this dries out in about two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Three days. So, I vacuum sealed all this, these bottles, and it was seven months later, I got it out, I got it out, put it on the table when the kids came over to play games, and I was nervous. Oh man, they were gone in like three minutes because they'd still say stay soft. Let's okay. enroll. Okay. Ghirardelli was on sale at, I don't know, Peterson's Market last month. My daughter-in-law <coughs> bought 60 bags. Oh, 60. Oh, 60. What's that good sale? She called mom. She was thinking of me because I taught her how to vacuum seal. So we split the 60 bags, and now we have chocolate chip cookies for whenever. And Easter holiday. Did anybody take advantage of buying that Easter candy? Yep. My kids can have a party any time in the year with the little chocolate eggs. They think it's so fun. My, my daughter did that with her children. Had an Easter party in July. And the neighborhood kids thought it was so cute to have tin foil wrapped Easter eggs. And she had vacuum sealed them. Yes. How do you vacuum seal a jar? Okay, we told you to buy in bulk. 
You know, I, if I buy that whole thing and don't vacuum seal, I'll eat the whole thing or it goes bad. I had a daughter-in-law that lost five pounds of it and took it to the office, but I think it was already about a year and a half old. Oh, the nuts had gone rancid, the raisins were hard, and some of us tried to pick up the other pounds. But, you know, it just was ruined. So, hey, this is not sealed, right? She's going to show you. Can you eat out of there and resell it? Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, good question. She said, can you eat out of it and then seal it? Well, every time I do this class, uh, they keep disappearing and I keep resealing them. <laughs> so I don't eat the whole thing on the way home. I reseal them. Okay, so here's your vacuum sealer. And it has the port. Here's the plug. And she's got the this, tube. This will fit a small ringed mouth. This one will fit the wide. Okay. Do they come with your vacuum sealer? No. Some of the newer ones might, but we bought these in the box. Here's the box. And um, you can get it at Bosch. You can get it. Oh, she's got an order. There it is. Full size. $10. That's it. They're, we're the weight to go because you just put it. Where, where is the weight? You don't use the ring, just use the lid, put that on, pop this down, and it will come with a tube. There is a port right here. And if you buy a good machine, you have to look to make sure it has a port. I went to Walmart about nine months ago and I bought the cheapest one they had. I got home and realized that it didn't, the reason it was cheap is because it didn't have the whole port. So I had to go back and get one that was eighty nine dollars instead of fifty nine dollars. Oh look, she's got a plug. No. <laughs> cool. Anyway, she'll turn that on and it will vacuum. It will vacuum out the air. You cannot do this very easily with anything really powdery. You do not do this with a product that's fresh or that's you know. Um, like an apple. <coughs> Yeah, like an apple. Nothing with or moisture in it. Okay. Yeah. Because it'll go into the tube are, and into your mold. See, these are all dry products that will not go bad because it's vacuum sealing. All dry products. If you use powder stuff and put a coffee, coffee filter on top of it and then put the lid on and then vacuum it, the powder will suck out. Right. right. You don't want powder or liquid to go through the tube or it ruins the machine. So I was stupid. I bought a huge box, a huge case for Grandma's house of baby wipes, you know, in the pouches. Mm -hmm. So I poked the pouch with a hole, put it in my my bag, you know, they can make bags for it, and started sucking. And next thing I know is, ah, oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. sucked all the water out of the baby wipes. Oh, don't, don't use the liquid. So that was my first mistake. Uh, 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 okay, no more liquids. Did it ruin your machine? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you learn from our mistakes. You'll hear it. Ready to take off. So all of these things have been sealed. Okay? So these last forever. Now you can use bags. Okay, let's talk about it. You got 
stuff that you've got Tootsie Rolls in a plastic bag that you make your own size and shape or whatever. You got Tootsie Rolls in a bottle. What's the advantage of using a bottle over a bag? Easier to open and I can reuse it. Reseal it. I can reseal the bag, but the bag just gets too small because you have to actually cut where the seal is. Okay. Can you reseal it with the same lid? Yep. They yep. shelf it. Yeah. Like, uh, hundreds of times. If you have not damaged the ring by using a can opener and when it's flat, the lid, you can use this a hundred times. I mean, whatever. You look at the rubber to make sure it's not. Uh, and the rubber disintegrates a little after about 10 years. Like canning. But I can use my canning lids, any of these lids. I interchange all my lids. I never throw them away. I never have to buy new lids. So, how do you open it? Ah, uh, good question. Who's got a quarter? Use a quarter or a spoon handle, and then you just. Or you can use this. Some people flip it. Yeah. No. 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 Can't open oh, this. Can break it. I just take. I have um, a quarter in my kitchen drawer, and I just treat. Pops open. Oh, doesn't <coughs> doesn't bend the lid, so I can reuse those forever. Okay. Why would you, you use? Why would you use? Oh, well, Walmart. Is that a good Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond. Order it online. online. Find you some. Would be better a brand that's better? Or? I like Food Saver. I like Food Saver. Costco. 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 Yeah, they go on sale at Costco every once in a while. Okay, we'll celebrate the coupon in their booklets. Why would you use this over a bottle? Or you could take it with you. Or just a portable, portable, portable backpack, lightweight. <coughs> A little less expensive. A little less. Less. I like the store. Yeah, and I need this for canning my meat. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, or jam or whatever. Yes. You can put little packages and things in your 72 hour kit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Let me give you one. Two cautions. First caution is do not vacuum seal in a bag anything that's a little bit moist or like a. Um, What's my favorite candy? Snickers. Oh, I tried oh. vacuum sealing Snickers in this, and after a while, the yummy nougat stuff leaked out through the packaging oh, and got stuck really? to the packaging. Oh, but it out of its own wrapper. If you do oh, it here, yeah. So we're talking hard stuff works best in the bags. Cookies. This is red vine licorice. My husband loves. Boy, I could get like. Well, almost a whole pound in here. <laughs> and let me tell you the other precaution. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the. Oh, yeah. Here's we'll the. We'll pass this around. Yeah, we'll, we'll pass, pass it around. We'll pass the rest this bag is hard. You can feel it. It's really hard. This bag is a little softer because when her husband went to seal it, he didn't realize that anything that has its own little bag, like your cookie mix or cake mixes, you have to slightly punch a hole in them with a little hat pin. Oh. Yeah, and or then safety pin. Safety pin or whatever. And it removes all of the air like it should be. So hard as a brick. Mm -hmm. But when you open it, it goes <laughs> and restores all the air. And you have to so do that with, feel that with your cook your candy bars. Oh, so you just poke a little like hole this. in the in the Snickers or in the MMs. Poke a little hole in it. So when I vacuum seal this, it takes the air out of the actual item inside. Otherwise, you just, I don't know what you're doing, you're putting it in a bottle. So you want to get the air out of the package also. Now, any of your, some of your snacks made by Frito have the Mylar type of silver bag inside. Oh, it's Mylar. That you can stick, you open it up, cut it open, and you stick that right in the lip of your vacuum sealer, and it will seal. Anything else that's just like potato chips or graham crackers or something, you have to put it in its bag. You have to make a baggie for it. Or put it in a bottle. I can't put it in a bottle. potato chips in the bottle. But if it's got the little Mylar lining in the <coughs> snack, you can just use that directly. Yeah. Okay. So rodents can't get into this. Moisture can't get into this. Air can't get into this. You have to preserve it from light. Put it in your basement before it starts. Okay. Should we talk about this? This is our next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I need two volunteers. All right, okay, come on up. Here, we're going to show you how to pack your uh, egg sources because you want to have eggs in your food storage, right? You can make scrambled eggs or hard boiled eggs or whatever. Or you don't 
don't have to run to the store to get eggs to make that cake or cookies. You're going to put your eggs in your food storage. Yeah, did you know that eggs will store down in your room, your storage room, for six to nine months? Straight from the store. So these cartons, let's see, this is, I know you can get um, Oakland's, er, yeah, Eggland's Best. Um, I think Reams has the styrofoam. This is what you want to store them in because of the process the sisters are going to do right now. Okay, now, actually, um, what we're doing, when the chicken lays her egg, she's got a whole bunch of goop over the egg. That's called the bloom. And you don't want to buy that from the store, so the manufacturers go in and get that all out of there. Clean it for you, so it's lovely. And we're going to put the bloom back on the egg to preserve it for up to a year. Oh, no, much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so what you're going to do is put a like a quarter size in your hand. A quarter size, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now show your lovely hands. What is that stuff? This is lubricant laxative mineral oil that you buy in the pharmacy section of your neighborhood grocery store. Okay, there's two kinds of lubricants, one that's a, a automotive and one that's a laxative. This is the one you want, the laxative. That will seal the, the eggshell. Okay, start playing with your eggs. Okay, what you're going to do, they have a little bit much on their hands. You don't really need a whole lot, you just need to barely cover them. And so they're beautiful and you store them, of course, the point side down. And that, that makes them last longer because the air pocket is on the top. So you want the protein and the solids of the egg down on the bottom. So my beautiful eggs, I've got eggs for whatever I want. What if you just I hate running out. Be a little thick. Yeah, and this is right through your hands. And yeah, um, your eggs are very porous as they sit like that right now. Thousands of little tiny holes that are porous. And mothers. Mother's um, waste products, because of the rest of the bloom, don't get through. But they wash that off, and along with it comes all the protective bloom that they okay. wash off, too. So um, now using you these eggs, they're a little bit hard to demolate them. They're nice. Oh, you okay. guys did good work. Um, I, that's about the only disadvantage. Thank you. In the summertime, just lovely. Yeah. So the heat. Well, make sure your basement is clean. My storage room was 70, 73. Yeah. Okay. So, so how do you tell if they spoil? Oh, yeah. But yeah. If you crack you'll smell them. <laughs> okay, we need to tell you about another fun thing to do. Yes. Well, the things you have. You can store cheese in your personal grocery store on the shelf. They do it in Europe. They've done it for centuries. Um, but <laughs> tell them that cheese is the best cheese to use because of the way they seal it. So this is a medium cheddar. Any hard cheese, no soft cheese, no Swiss cheese. Oh, I want you to store hard cheese. What about mozzarella? Not yes. Have you stored mozzarella? I don't. First my went. Oh. Well, I have um, Parmesan Reggiano and Pecorino. It's wonderful. Now this is not. This is not. Um, what's French? Oh, it's it's not Tillamook. It's not Tillamook. But it is still excellently vacuum sealed, and so I've experimented with it, and it's lasted as long as as the other. Uh, I've had my cheese for I found one that was a year old. Went down, got, oh shoot! And I label it. You know, you put a little marker. I have my date 511, <gasps> not 2011. No. So April 11th. Mine, no. mine was. <laughs> you, see, it's fine. It's 2011. It's a little of the no. way that's come out of it after yeah. a year old. What had happened to my cheese? Sharp cheddar oh, cheese was last. Yeah, sharp <laughs> cheese. <laughs> just sharpens it up. Do you have to put it in the so so I just keep the mind. It's wise. It's kind of a heavy, heavy oh, duty. Nice. Yeah. 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 You don't need it, though. Yeah. 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 You really need it. It was difficult to hear how you stored your cheese. Could you please repeat that? Did you vacuum seal it? No, you buy Tillamook because that's, they seal it really well. A lot of the stores put 
a waxing thing over it that doesn't isn't a real wax. Tone lock, so medium tone cheddar. Tone, tone, tone That's tone. what you want to store. And just put it in a container, or put it on your shelf, and label it. And then go rotate it every three months. If you love sharp cheese, you just save yourself a lot of money. You just do you only only get medium cheddar or just any syllable? Medium cheddar. Well, it doesn't come by over there. They don't make mine. What about Cold Jack or anything like that? You can, yeah. You can experiment. I'd experiment with it. Yeah, because I know this has lasted me three months. So I'm not worried about that. But okay. Anyway. What is this? Come and talk to us after. On the eggs and the cheese? I'm sorry, the last? Up to a year for both. Up to a year? Okay, so those eggs and I don't know. What? How do you knock the eggs and found that? When you crack when you it, crack it, it will smell. <laughs> oh, okay. I've had yeah. one. Okay. I've had one. I had one that went seven, back. Eight dozen. Because a crack had occurred in So I threw it out. I'm not using it. Now, by the time you store it for quite a while, and if you don't have one of these cartons and you store it in this, if you store it in this, you should lay two long strips of saran wrap in it first. So that it will absorb or keep the carton from absorbing all your oil. Yeah, I didn't do it the first time, and my carton was all, all of the mineral oil had soaked down yeah. into the cardboard. So I just put saran across it, put the eggs in, put another thing of saran on, Easy. put it on the lamp, put my storage. My and storage. if you use it within a couple of weeks, say you bought them on sale at Easter and bought four dozen, and you put three dozen down in the storage room, and after about a week, you realize, oh, I need one of those. So you go down and get it, and it's really oily like this. Well, this is so much more preferable to what our grandmothers did with Vaseline. But if you really feel squeamish, just take a paper towel and wipe it off slightly before you crack it and put it in your meal. That's all. So, so if you're a farmer, you can just put the fresh eggs right in there without doing anything. Right? right. If you grow your own eggs, just put them right in. Yeah, you don't wash them off. Yeah. So please move. So anyway, this is good yeah. for six, nine, 12 months. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that's all over the topic. You can wax oh, your cheese now. Yeah, yeah, you buy a certain kind of wax. Don't use paraffin. Yeah. Okay, baby. Should we do the last topic? <laughs> okay, last topic. Were you going to talk about bottling the cheese? Or? Like the bottling? Oh, yeah, the bottle. oh okay. Oh, the this is freeze-dried cheese. Oh, freeze-dried mozzarella. It's good to have lots of sources in your food storage. We also, I have also bought a couple of the cans of cheese, but it's very expensive. But it's kind of like um, uh, Velveeta, and you can grate it. But anyway, she asked about this. This is my favorite friend. These are powdered eggs. <coughs> They're whole eggs. Oh, I highly recommend them. They make wonderful quiche. They make wonderful crepes. Throw it in your cookies. You absolutely cannot tell any difference. They don't scramble up so hot. You can't fry them. But they are wonderful in any dried product. And so it's very economical. I buy these in a number 10 can. The whole eggs I bought from, I probably have one can from Honeyville and one can from uh, August and Farms. But wonderful. I experimented with them, taught them in our classes. People couldn't tell. My kids couldn't tell that they weren't fresh eggs for their, keep, for their crepes. So it is the way to go. Yes? Once they're open, how long do they last? One year. A number 10 can that you open and don't reseal lasts one year. So if you know you can't eat powdered eggs or whatever you open in a year, that's how you can use the vacuum sealer to put it in bottles. So I put my raspberries that you tasted tonight, I put it in bottles because I don't like raspberries, just my husband does, so I will still have them vacuum sealed for another 20 years. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the nutritive value of coconut oil. How many of you use coconut oil? How many of you think it's poison? <laughs> the old school was. It was the worst fat you could put in your body. New, new research has shown that it is the healthiest other than uh, extra virgin olive oil and uh, avocado oil. Those are all equally good. We want to tell you that equally bad is Crisco and canola. Please and margarine. Do not, yeah, and margarine. Please do not use those products in your home. Um, they, it has something to do with the long fatty acid chains, the hydrogen, hydrogen and carbon chains. And long chain is very bad for your body. Medium to short chain is good for your body. Because your body can't break it all down. So those fat chains have been broken off and they're running through your body 
starting to attach to places. Mm -hmm. So short chain items, which is palm oil, coconut oil, olive oil, and mother's breast milk are the four best types of oils on the plant. Well, mother's breast milk is that, but do you know what they're putting in powdered milk now? Baby's milk? They're putting in coconut oil. So it's totally digestible. Here's, and these, a, here's an experiment I did, and you can go home and do this. Coconut oil, I put, this is what it looks like when it's at room temperature. Well, it's not cold, cold, cold. I put a little piece of um, coconut oil right here, and I put shortening right here. An hour later, I read a book. An hour later, I looked down at my hand. The coconut oil had totally absorbed. I hadn't touched it. The coconut oil was still sitting in Crisco. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Crisco. Okay, so here's a fact that when the body eats the short and medium chain fats, they are absorbed into your cells and utilized by the body in less than 18 days. When you eat hydrogenated or trans fats or partially hydrogenated poisons, it takes your body 51 days to absorb and assimilate. So they're sitting in your blood cells and in your arteries. You don't get rid of them. How about butter? Butter is excellent. Butter is, butter is okay. Butter is better. Butter is like butter. Butter is like salt butter with the olive oil. Not, not no. that. I use this on my face. Mm -hmm. I use it. It's wonderful. Can I what? use it to make icing? You use the coconut oil for icing. Can I? Oh, can you? Sure. So does it do what oh, sure. will do if I'm trying to make like butter? Yeah, if your room is really warm, it'll, it'll melt. It won't be as, uh, yeah. So the banana, the banana bread that you just Keep had, I put, I used coconut oil instead of, instead of Crisco. If you I have to have a little in your pan to fry your fish, a little coconut oil. I fry pancakes, anything. They say you should have two tablespoons of it a day. Just eat it because it's so good for your body. It actually helps your body get rid of the other fats. So if you were making chocolate chip cookies and it does calls for one cup of shortening, do you do one cup of that? Yeah, okay, two, no, no, no. Two, two problems with coconut oil. Oh, this is not a problem. It stores in depth. It doesn't go rancid like canola oil does. So the two cautions on coconut oil is you can't use it shortening um, equal amounts in cookies. Yeah. I did in bread products, cakes and that kind of thing, but the cookies will just go totally flat. flat. So you have to play with um, butter and coconut oil. The other thing you can't use this in, unless you, well, you have to do a few tricks, is you can't put it in your smoothies right off the bat because when it hits cold, like the ice cream, right. it, it goes um, solidifies. Chunky. Chunky. Okay. So you, you have to put it in a little hot water then you can add that to your smoothie. That's the only two things. That mm -hmm. When you said it stores indefinitely, you haven't sealed it or anything? No, just have not sealed it. And like honey. health, health mm -hmm. wise, those Polynesian people, they've done so much research on Polynesian people, they don't have diabetes, they don't have heart attack, they don't have half the stuff that we as Americans do because of all these trans fats. Yes. Yes. I have a friend who had a, a sore that went way down from surgery into his leg and it would not heal and it would not heal and he Stuffed it with coconut oil and it started to eat. That's so cool. Okay. Well, wow. it's good dressing. for you. When I'm salad dressing, can you use it? Yep. I can use it. Make your own salad dressing. Yep. Wonderful. Can you get Wonderful. Okay, we've got to do three and four because we're out of time. We have been warned in latter days. There will be floods and earthquakes. So put your house in order and prepare before the dam breaks. Be prepared. Be prepared. story we and honey. Plan a garden where birds they end up. Forget some money. Please do not procrastinate. <coughs> Excuses have no muscle. You'll never find a better time. And now the better hustle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. Honey. We go to our customer stuff because we're oh, done. Okay, we're, okay. Done. So we just want to leave you with our testimonies that, boy, do we ever know that this is what we need to be doing? And, and this is how you put it all together, kids. This and you, you the one prizes. Okay, so here's a, like they've done. This is so fun to have this organized. Take two somebody that's just had surgery. Here you go. I'm not fixing your meal right now, but you know your son or your husband. Here's the recipe. Just go ahead with it. Everything you need is in the bag. Call your teenagers and say, go downstairs, 
out of the store and get one of the dinners, go upstairs and fix it. So for instance, here's the recipe on the back. Kathy fixed one last night. What was it? Um, goulash. It was uh, Amber Amber goulash. goulash. Yeah. It was over pasta. The directions were a little off. That was the only thing because she wasn't there to help me. Yeah, everything was in the bag. She didn't no, have to go to the store. <laughs> it was yummy. Okay, so this one is... Chicken. Apricot chicken. Oh, this is really good. Apricot chicken. Apricot chicken is so good. There's the rice. We vacuum sealed it. Here's the chicken. Here's um, your Russian dressing that is so good, guys. And then your um, Lipton, oh, onion, Lipton onion soup. Oh, it's in here with my rice. And your dressing, even though it's expired, it's still good. Yep. And you're oh, going to cook it? Oh, somebody took out my apricot jam. Oh, yeah, big oh, jam. Anyway, take me a little bottle of jam to go with you. See, your 18 meals that you have on your list, you can go home with your creative. You can do them in bags. You can do them in um, these potatoes that I got for free. You can put like 10 meals of the same kind in here. There's my little picture. My instructions, I could say to my husband, go down and get all the stuff for that meal, come upstairs and cook it. Because I'm tired. <laughs> so I got these free from um, a deli, like Smith's. I went into Smith's and said, will you save me these containers? And he'd save one or two a day for me. Pretty soon I had 12, 15, how many they I wanted. stack all of your noodles. You can just so have, I've got to like, feed a whole crowd. Or dinner. I have this meal in there. The other thing is you can just get an apple box and put about 10 taco soup recipes in the apple box. Just or your loose items if you want to. You know, so just have the recipe and on the outside. And you have 18. Put in an apple box. Store wow. those in your basin. So on my bottom shelf, I have a row of like eight apricot chickens and then eight shepherd's pies and eight spaghettis and eight taco soups. And I just put them in, I double bag them because your meat is heavy. So I put two of these lunch bags together, and um, now did we use all our meat for all these? No. We have. Remember, we told you we have meat in boxes too. So we don't have to get into that if we want to make something that's not in a bag. We can still just go pull off our shelf whenever we want to make something different. Can we make a, Do you have a list of recipes and stuff or ideas to do it with that? Well, you have 19, right? If I give you my list, they're my recipes, but we do have it, and you're welcome to put it on the website. But you have a website? I mean, you do. you're a state. So, yeah, see the vision? Use your own recipes, figure out how to put them together, do them for family home evening. My yes. husband would get so excited every day. Monday night, six we'll do weeks another in recipe. A row. Every he'd, Monday night, we choose another meal. Come up, what do we, we put it together tonight? And he'd help me run that machine, and we would. It was so fun. It's really good. And now I'm peace of mind. I've got it. I'm here. Okay. I have a question. If your most of food storage has, is not protected by any kind of electricity, but you're cooking it with electricity, in an emergency situation, you're not going to be able to make a lot of these things. She asked if there was an emergency. We wouldn't be able to use power to cook all of these foods that are in bags. Oh, we got that covered. Oh, yeah. we have solar ovens. Four, exactly. We've got solar ovens, camp chefs, barbecues, oh, that, Dutch ovens. That cool little kitchen thing that's 21 bucks. Oh, yeah. It uses propane or, stove. or butane, and you can use it in your kitchen. <coughs> oh, they're the that's best. Those little camp stoves, they're butane, and you just put it on your kitchen counter and make tortillas. Make these are butane. Butane. They're safe in the tent, safe on your counter. They are wonderful. That's okay. in one of our classes. Sherry wants us to cook. We need to be done. Come I on, She's got some wonderful things going. And so we just wanted to remind you that because the shakeout day was last week, doesn't mean we can't all go home and start shaking in our boots and start doing something because, what, two days later, we had an earthquake. So what, would you be ready? Yeah, to Willa, Magna, have the earthquake. So are you ready to leave your house or are you ready to go down in your basement and start cooking meals because you've got everything organized and you know you could? So that's our challenge to you is start figuring ways to put them together and know what you've got. Know that you have complete meals.